Dark Fracture Prologue is a new horror title, fresh off the Steam new releases page. Although it's not so much a title as it is a small taster for what they're planning later on. But is it worth paying attention to? Let's see. How long was I out? I need a cigarette. You begin the game in an office, as so many horror games seem to, playing as a man working in some sort of vague facility. Soon you're opening drawers, throwing objects off the desk, finding keys and all that fun stuff you like doing in pretty much every horror game post-amnesia. Speaking of frictional, there are some not so subtle similarities here, the main one being a sanity meter, which is presented in a percentage format. What is it to be 92% insane, I wonder? Exactly what this place is, isn't revealed. There are gurneys in the main room, a freezer full of bodies and a store cupboard. The whole place is dilapidated, so there is clearly supposed to be something else going on. Although, if you've read the store page description, you already know what it is. Now, the idea that all or part of what you're playing is taking place in the character's mind is not a new one. You know that. I know that. Do lead developers know that? I'm not so sure. Time will tell if the full thing is ever released. Although, I will just point out how important it is to walk a very fine line between what is the reality of the game world and the fantasy of the character's mind. The mental health meter of Amnesia was one of the most critiqued parts of that game, and although I won't defend it as some brilliant piece of design, I will say that that game had its edge because besides that mechanic, the setting was real, as were the monsters. Having the world itself be nightmare-like means any effect on your meter dropping is unrepresentative of how the player is feeling, as the game has already blown its load on its set design and jump scares. I understand that they wanted to get straight into the horror for this prologue, but what would have made sense here is to have a slower build-up, establishing a mostly normal world which then sets the stage for things to go weird afterwards. Maybe we have to walk to this workplace first, establish the setting and let the player get settled in before unsettling them. Amnesia is a brilliant example of this, but there are many. Imagine Resident Evil 7 starting you off inside the house already. Another issue I have with the visuals is this heads up display, it's just way overdone. Block capital letters for everything in an impactful font doesn't scream horror for me. Minimal stuff on your screen lends itself to immersion. Constant journal updates taking up large portions of the screen is obnoxious. There is a reason most games now go for unobtrusive small lettering and only essential information popping up. Less is more is what I'm trying to say. Getting back to the gameplay for a moment, let's talk about this sanity meter. It's lowered when spooky things happen around you, which seem utterly scripted but apparently are randomised to an extent, with many possible ones. Regardless, these are only scares and there appears to be no actual danger or failure, putting it firmly in the walking simulator category. You would think the sanity meter running out would be the game over here, and perhaps it is, but it never happened for me. I went along with what the game said, the spooks happened often, the meter went down, but by the last few moments the loss of sanity seemed to intentionally fall at a predetermined rate, with no way to increase it. So whether there is any actual punishment for it dropping is uncertain. I can only presume in the full game these things will matter, but I can't say. So if there is no fail state, is that a problem? You know I don't have a problem with walking sims, although exactly how effective they can be in the horror genre is something I'm still not convinced by. Layers of Fear took that approach and it did absolutely nothing for me, although it does seem I'm in the minority there. So is the sanity meter an inventory screen simply token? 
Right now, yes. In terms of interaction, Dark Fracture takes several leaves out of Visage's book and gives you a light and camera to hold in both hands. A lighter like we are warned can run out of gas, but there are no refills and seems to run infinitely, as well as a 35mm SLR camera with a flash somewhere? Is it in the lens? I'm a camera nerd, so I know this is a nitpick, but come on. Autofocus and a built-in flash and an old mechanical film camera? Uh, afraid not. Beyond all of that is the question of whether this prologue got me interested for where things will go next. And I suppose it would be a tad mean to outright say no, so I'll say maybe. There are some issues. The cliches of psychological horror games are very well ingrained now, and there are many, many that have emulated the trendsetters. So far, this looks like just another one. Prove me wrong, guys. Prove me wrong. This must be a nightmare. What the hell is going on? 